Yeah. All right, all right, all right. What is going on tonight, there, ladies and gentlemen, for all across the glorious of the United States? This is your boy Will of the MVP of the Bay, that is. And tonight we're doing this, of course, HWR WGS TV style with the crew right here to talk about Monday Night Raw for the week of Monday, November eighteenth, two thousand thirteen. So let's introduce them, shall we? Over. Right. Over at Hardcore Wrestling Radio, he is known as the boss, not Bruce Springsteen. He is that shining star, Rick. How you doing, sir? Uh, well, that was an uh, interesting show we watched, but uh, other than that, I do think I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you an insulin shot since uh, you know what's coming up later. All right, and <laughs> uh, Tennessee's own, he watched Raw with us. He's on YouTube.com. He's the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance to the show. Thank God I don't live in Nashville. <laughs> or else he'd be traveling 250 miles straight there. <laughs> and of course, our good friend from CWA over there at Classic Wrestling Association, Mr. Joseph Knight. Joseph, how you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm looking at, I was about to do the Jeff Jarrett strut just to show Ziggler how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Well, folks, today we're going to do the review a little bit differently today, uh, not your original format, because uh, the guys and I decided, bump what we originally do. We're going to go with a little bit of highs and lows for this review. And how we're going to do it, you probably ask, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to take matches, and we're going to talk basically highs and lows. Fuck the ratings, uh, all that. We're just going to really tell how we feel about it. So, I hope you're prepared for one big ride. First off, we're not even going to do segments. Fuck it. We're going to go into what I thought was a beatdown of all beatdowns, Rick. Talk to the folks about Randy Orton getting what he wants against Brad Maddox, your high and low of the match. He actually came to the ring uh, looking for, you know, pretty much saying, hey, you know, where was my support? I thought I was supposed to be in charge. Uh, this is, of course, after uh, Stephanie and uh, Triple H were supposedly coming off back off vacation. And that's where they pretty much put him in this place and saying, look, you know, we're the bosses, uh, you know, um, and you better, you know, know who, you know, we're the bosses and what we say goes. And that's pretty much it. And you better realize who you are and who you work for. And that's pretty much it. And uh, that was... Not really a bad. It was an okay match. I mean, it was, I'm sorry, sorry, okay segment rather, um, for what it was. Um, uh, nothing really super special or great about it. You know, just very blah and bland. Blah and bland. So, uh, what would be your high and what would be your low? Well, we know your lows to blend, but what was high about it? <laughs> well, well, that was the point. There was no high to it. I mean, it was just kind of like you know. Uh, the rest of the point was is that you know, that uh, I guess uh, Vicky. Th- I guess the the high was is when uh, Vicky and uh, um, Brad Max came out and uh, you know they were kind of trying to like throw each other under the bus and uh, Brad Max is you know Triple H said look you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have a match with uh, Orton and that was pretty much I guess you could call it the high he tried to leave and uh, Kane's like nope he drags him down and that's that's about the high yep. for what all it was. Right. I mean, everybody knew what they were going to get, and everybody knew that they were all going to get in trouble with uh, Stephanie and Triple H, so, you know, right. uh, nothing uh, big. All there. right, cool, no problem. But, all right, Lance, we're going to go to you for our second match, which was uh, the Intercontinental title match with Axel versus Biggie Langston. Give us your high and low about this match. Well, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But, honestly, these two guys don't work that good together. High, I'd say, than the match. And we got a new champion. That's about it. All right. And note what Joseph said earlier. Big E is the jacked up Webster versus the crimson chin of Curtis Axel. Okay, that's the that's the high of the match. <laughs> Uh, and I, I hold, and I hide and I hold all rights to those. <laughs> yes, you do. All right. Uh, next, uh, James, do we really got to talk about this? But I guess you're high and low about the Big Show Ryback match. 
Uh, I'm glad you didn't tell me then say the other man, the other thing that happened. Oh no, no this. segments here. We're going to the point here. Okay, fine, thank you. Hi, well, Jake. Point. Thank you for saving me for that one. Anyway, um, really, the, the high has to be right back hitting that you know that shell shock on Big Show. But really, the low, most of the match has been a low for me. It's not really like, eh, it's an A match for me, you know. Mm. All right, all right. Well, hey, that's to the point, ladies and gentlemen. This is to the point. No bullshit. And now, Joseph, you're high and low on The Real Americans versus Kofi Kingston and The Miz. You know... I would have to say the high was actually watching finally uh, Miss switching, but I, I just wonder <laughs> why they're switching them heel. You know, it's mm-hmm. like it, when you switch a heel, and I said it before, when you switch someone to heel, it's to feud with someone. So I guess he's feuding with Coffee Kingston. That's enough of a low right there. <laughs> you know, but, uh, geez, yeah, that that match itself, I'll have to say it was pretty good. It was pretty decent. You know, I I actually, you know, thought for a good moment that Ziggler, I mean, Miz was going to go in there and do, make the big, you know, hot tag and clean house. But it, it surprised me. But it's kind of like now Coffee, I'm now the new jobber, Kingston, is getting beatings back and forth. Now, overall, if you want me to give you my highs and lows for the overall show, I might as well get this out of the way. Mm-hmm. My high was actually the last match of the... And not really because of the Rey Mysterio running down. It's because of, but of the tease of the Wyatt versus the Shield. I think that's what was more interesting than the, than the match. The lows, besides watching... Uh, jacked up Webster beating the Crimson Chin <laughs> <laughs> was the diva musical chairs. I mean, okay, these girls don't have talent, but now you're really putting. Might as well let's let's just lower some poles into the middle of the ring and have them all pole dance. Unfortunately, it's PG, so yeah, you can't. Hey, they ain't strip. We can... that's pro- <laughs> that probably would have saved the show if they did. That would have been a high for the match. Yeah, yeah that that my low would have turned into a high. Yeah. You know, would have got a rise out of it, but uh, anything else. All right. Uh. All right, folks, uh, we're about half time into our little high and low segment of the review. But I do want to talk about one little thing that I thought that was interesting that probably every fella here in this call would probably like was the Divas Musical Chair segment. I mean, did we really need this? I mean, most of us were just looking and looking and looking, but there was yep. nothing really, really to look at, gentlemen. I mean, were you just looking because of how they look, or was the segment well, just on, straight on. tech on this one? Hold on, time out, time out, time out. There's a reason why they did that. Later on, that was, uh, after um, the match, we got to go to after after this. Um, they made a match where it was going to be Team Total Divas, which is all seven of them. Even Jojo and Eva Marie will face the seven non-Total Divas. Yes, Team AJ Lee, yes. AJ, Tamina, uh, Akshana. And may I interject, and I I believe we all said it, I think we said it earlier, the only thing that that match had of any value you got to look at some very nice, hot asses. That was the, that was the only value for that match. That was the thing I was trying to say, Jimmy. You mean that, you mean, <laughs> that was the high of the match. You mean, you, yeah, you mean, that wasn't a match. That was like a regular day. Okay, <laughs> okay, for the segment. I, I'll call it a segment. Yeah. But still, very nice asses. Yeah. If, if, if we could have had some, you know, shirts being ripped off and some titties fall out, it would have been even really nice. But, you know, we know that was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone what ask what, 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 in their heads. What it would have been cool. What it would have been cool if the lights would have gone down, the disco ball would have came down, the pause, the pose would have came actually land in the middle of the ring and the girls danced around it. And Triple H will say that's for good for business 
then Stephanie would have just petted greed him. That would have saved the whole show for the year. Yeah. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think Sable's still in the WWE. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Now we're going to go to the second half of our high and low segment for the Raw review. Uh, let's see. Should I give this one to? All right, James. We're going to shuffle up. We're going to go to you for this. I one. wonder why you gave this to me. Yeah, damn right. The high and low of Vicky Guerrero and her water drinking ass versus AJ Lee. <laughs> um, there there was no high in this match. It's just basically. Vicky Guerrero quickly tapping out to the Black Will. But there were two main lows. The one was that, um, you know, this was not really a match. This was just, like, stalling for time. But the main thing but the main thing about it was Vicky Guerrero was basically pulling what AJ did in real life um, on in that London uh, uh, event, I think it was Saturday. When she had yeah. the dehydration, well, I think it was in fr- uh, Friday. It was oh no, it was Friday, not Saturday. But it was like basically the dehydration thing. It, it, it's just uh. all right. So he says no high, a little bit low. All right, uh, Lance, you're high and low on the Dolph Ziggler, Damian Sandow Broadway brawl. Well, low got to be in all them instruments. Uh, on guitars getting destroyed because honestly, I'm a guitar collector. That kind of uh, high. Uh, Damien Sandow getting a uh, drum or two drums broken over him. Hmm. Well, that pretty much solves that. <laughs> what's the what's the what's the low? Yeah, we need a low. All them uh, guitars get guitars. He said it. Oh. Okay. Jeff Jarrett. Yeah, Jeff Jarrett is oh, yeah. not going to be happy about this. I was Jeff waiting Jarrett. for them. I was waiting for JBL to say, we're here in the south of Dixie and make other comments towards TNA because he did throw, <laughs> you know, he was throwing them little think... zingers. He was throwing those zingers out there, folks. You know, he was saying references to Double J. They were doing the strut. I, in all honesty, if they would have came out and done a little bit more stuff with, remember, I don't know if you guys remember when they had uh, Daphne come out at some uh, Vice President Palin or the you know presidential candidate Palin, Sarah Palin, yeah. excuse me, Sarah Palin, and she did that type of gimmick. They should have done something like that and bring a Dixie out. No, all he had to do is, hey, hey, we're in Dixieland. That's all he had to say. There you go, and we missed the train. <laughs> all right. Um, Rick, you're high and low on the Rhinestone Cowboys of 3 uh, and versus R-Truth in the debut of Xavier Woods. Was there a high on this one? <laughs> I'm asking yeah, that. Yeah, there a match <laughs> after it was over. Yeah, I think that was the high. Believe me, that that was uh, uh, oh god, that, this match was really painful to ma- uh, to watch. Uh, Xavier Woods, his debut was kind of okay. I mean, he looked. Like, I mean, the fact that he had to tag in our truth and our truth had to you know do a lot of the work, and then they, he tagged in Xavier so Xavier could do his signature, then his finisher, and on three MB of all people. Hmm. Not good. Not hey. good. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, they, they, um, had, they had better thing in TNA than they had here. But that's just, uh, that, 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 that's just, that was just a rough, ugly match. So, sorry, guys. Oh, no, that's the problem, Rick. Hey, the truth is better than uh, sugarcoating it here. Team Pac-Man wins. <laughs> yes, there was a little yeah, Not by much. One, not but, by much. <laughs> but it really wasn't that much, unfortunately. That is Rick telling the truth. And finally, our 12-man tag team made event. Joseph, to you, sir. Basically, Team Punk versus Team... Uh, Shield I, Wyatt. Uh, Shield Wyatt. <laughs> You're high and low on the main event. You know what? I would have to say the uh, wow. 
I would have to say the high point of it was just the Ray, one Ray Mysterio coming in, of course, and everybody getting their stuff. But I think more was interesting was the the riot Wyatt family and the Shield, you know, going at it. The low point of that match, I, I'm going to say it again: the Wyatts and the Shield. I know it's both. I'm hitting both sides, but think about it. It's a teaser, and they could have done more with it. So while it was a high point of the match, besides all the maneuvers and Ray coming back, they could have done a little bit more. So I was hoping to see maybe a, a slugfest and somebody comes and breaks it up. And then they focus back on their enemy team. you know. So I'm, I'm going to have to do both high and lows on the same group of people. Okay, that's fair enough. And just to note one other thing, yes, ladies and gentlemen, Rey Mysterio is back. As we know, he came at the end of the match and helped out Team Punk, and they celebrated, you know, there's possibility that he's going to be the mystery opponent for Team Punk at Survivor Series. I don't know. Do you think this fits? What do you guys think? Is Rey number five? I think it fits, but unfortunately, I don't think uh, at that point they don't have much of a choice. And I, I mean, obviously, like you said, it's a teaser. I mean, we have two more matches before Royal Rumble. We have uh, two more pay-per-views, excuse me. We have TLC, and then we have Royal Rumble, and that's where, of course, the road to WrestleMania starts. And I would not be surprised if we see by TLC, if we see the, uh, the Wyatts and we see the, uh, the Shields start to fall apart. And that's probably what we're going to see. We're probably going to see them start falling apart. They'll probably start doing singles matches or something like that. They'll probably start, like, you know, uh, you know, one-on-one, something, you know, it'll, they'll still probably try to pull them apart and, you know, we'll see a little mini teams, but probably by Royal Rumble, where they'll have to face each other and one knocks each other out, that's where it's all going to come to a head. You know. Right. No doubt that's where it's going to come to a head. All right, and I guess we'll end it with a... I guess it'll be a little bit of a... um, Overall, what you think about Raw. Like I said, there ain't no rating. Just say your final piece. And I'm going to go ahead and go first on this one. This Raw sucked. I'm sorry. 3MB... Just disband them already. And basically, now that we established most of the matches that are going to go for Survivor Series... Yeah, I, I hope Survivor Series uh, lives up to the hype and uh, we won't get to see lackluster crap is what we seen tonight. So that's my final take about Raw. Rick, your your final thoughts about Raw. Say anything you want. Anything. Yeah, for, for a go-home show, this should have... Well, I can't... I guess, I guess SmackDown will be able to do the official go-home show, but for the last Raw before the Survivor Series, this was... This was a really bad raw. Was a, uh, <clears throat> all right. This should have been. There could have been so much more to it, and um, it just didn't happen. Uh, a lot of things, just you know. I mean, the, the the Wyatt Shield was a good story, but again, they didn't really. They left a lot hanging. Um, some of the matches were really dry and just, eh, you know, left you know for mm, lack of luster. So, yeah, I have to agree with you. All right. Lance, your final thoughts on Raw. Say anything you feel like. This show blew. <laughs> A three-word um, sentence, this show although blew. Although it, some of the stuff they did in the show proves they listened to HWR. Yes, they finally listened to us somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> uh, James, your final thoughts about the show. Feel free. I agree with everybody. It sucked. The divas, <laughs> why we have the musical chairs, why did we have the general managers get beat up? Uh, it's nice to see Xavier Woods debuting. Shocking though, but... And yay, we have a new intercultural champion. And Rick that is means, happy. Rick is and, happy. And Rick don't have to deal with Curtis Axe or the fluke anymore. Yay. <laughs> And now we just got to deal with a jacked up Webster. <laughs> That's cool. And finally, Joseph, 
your final take on this Raw, speak freely. Well, it, everything will have to be censored. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, watching the Crimson Chin take on, you know, Webster, that was pretty good. That was It was a so-so thing. Watching, uh, I, you know what, I have to disagree, this band 3MB, get rid of Jinder Mahal and turn the other two into a regular tag team. Give them a, a good gimmick because you need tag teams and they can go far. Um, you know, overall, I wasn't impressed with this show. They could have done better. There was too much talking. There was Randy Orton complaining. There was the ego trip of Stephanie and Triple H. And I get a funny feeling that I think Shane is going to come around. You know, who knows? I mean, he should come around and do something and, and join with Vince and try to take back the company. You know, like I said, the only highlight for me was watching the Shield and the Wyatt family almost go at it. Besides that, I wasn't impressed with this show. I'm hoping, you know, I, I, I can't wait to see what they do for the pay-per-view. But besides that, I'm agreeing with everybody. It it, it kind of sucked. Yeah, there you go. And uh, this will pretty much uh, say to uh, this Raw, you suck. The show sucked. Everything sucked. And you may have listened to us, but have you really listened to everybody around you? No. But that's going to conclude that, folks. So uh, with that, uh, Rick, where can we find you at? Of course, they can always find me on my Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash hardcore wrestling radio. And don't forget to like and subscribe us over on our YouTube page where you can hear all of our wrestling, hardcore wrestling radio shows. And that's over at youtube.com slash HWR show. All right. Joseph, where can people find you at when they want to find out information about CWA? Oh, they can find us on Facebook under Classic Wrestling Association. They can go to our website at ClassicWrestlingAssociation.com. They can find us on Twitter at Pro Wrestling CWA. They can find us on YouTube at CWA Classic Pro. You can now also find us on Instagram, on Instagram, backslash Classic Wrestling Association. Woo! Got that all out. <laughs> all right, Lance, where can they find you at on YouTube when they want to come find you? YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV. Do album reviews, NASCAR reviews. Well, I ain't going to be doing another one of them until February because we'll see them over. But do a little bit of wrestling reviews, cooking videos, Q&As, and we're popping to my head. And, of course, uh, James, my tag team partner for the Big Easy James, where would they expect to find all your information through Twitter? Where can they find you at? They can find me at WrestleMania. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. They could see me in WrestleMania. Um, if you want to find me on Twitter, um, I am Fatboy504, P-H-A-T-B-O-I-504. I don't tweet a lot. I just do mostly retweets. But I retweet like stuff, like football, wrestling stuff. And you will see me on the HWR and the WGS TV. I will not be on the show Wednesday. Because I have work, I will not be on on Friday nor Saturday, and maybe even possibly Monday, because I will be in Houston, Texas, for my uncle's wedding. Uh oh. So, James better get a shine on. Um, but yeah, um, and yeah, um, I ha I apologize ahead of time that I have not done any of the. Diva of the day or knockout of the day because I've been busy, so yeah. All right, and of course, you, your boy Will and the MVP of the Bay. I also contribute to Hardcore Wrestling Radio and WGS TV. You know, I'll have your face and heels of the week. You know, and I'll throw in a few pictures to make our fans happy because you know we care for the fans. We just don't care for the marks that think that they're better than us. So uh, keep that worn. <laughs> so with that said, for Rick, Lance. James and Joseph, this is Will saying, if you watched Raw, you really didn't miss much. You could have watched the Patriots-Panthers game. But till then, uh, till Wednesday, we'll see you when we see you.
today's uh, H, uh, today's raw review has been sponsored by the penalty flag. That's right. Just in case you need to throw a penalty flag at somebody, just pick one up to, at your nearest Win Dixie. Oh, <laughs> and don't forget that uh, CWA is doing their drive for their show. So you know what? If you live in that New Jersey area, drop drop by, drop off a toy. You know. You think they think about the kids, and Joseph does too. So think about the kids. Holidays are coming up. 